Hello, I'm Sham Sriram, Visiting Assistant Professor in the Department of Political Science at Butler University. Please watch the video from my colleague, William Chavez, as both of us preview our forthcoming article on the Mad Max franchise. William analyzes game design and ludology in his presentation, while I explore series discourse, the methodology which produces it, and its larger implications to religion and pop culture. Mad Max exemplifies the niche genre of Ozploitation. First, it exploits various preconceived notions of Australians as crazed hoons, driven wild with motor mania, forming a degenerate country unable to protect itself from its criminal population. Second, Mad Max exploits culturally specific fears from Australia's colonial past, creating a collective national nightmare where near-future Australia what we dub Max Tralia, is violently reconfigured into an indigenous culture following the horrors of climate change and nuclear holocaust. Max Tralian civilization is plagued by a rhizomatic, that is, horizontal system of retrogression. Its crude technological, religious, and socioeconomic customs, what we call maximum madness, reflect not only the authenticated cultural features of Australian aboriginals, but the distortions created by European settlers. Analysis of Max Tralia simultaneously reveals the creative enterprises of sci-fi world building and the related colonial inventions of savagery. Both are unified through a speculative form of anthropology, a category that Bosch calls design fiction, where worlds are prioritized over stories. Given that speculative anthropology created Max Tralia, it is through a speculative ethnography that we can reverse engineer its exotification of indigeneity. Our methodology interweaves the series' films, novels, video games, and comics into a single multifaceted complex. Max Tralia is emblematic of what Hills dubs hyperdegesis, that is, a vast and detailed narrative space shown from its interior but with only a fraction ever directly seen or encountered. Elsewhere, Hassler Forrest refers to this as, quote, transmedia world building, end quote, a creative enterprise that, quote, takes place across media involves audience participation, and is a process that defers narrative closure. World building serves sci-fi creators as a means to exotify the familiar. Max Tralian tools, vehicles, and weapons, for instance, convey the status and ingenuity of the characters of this world. Historical traditions, Max Tralian and prior, are likewise preserved in localized and embodied residues. Cultural transmission, for example, according to Novetsky, requires the medium of living human bodies for success. Mad Max Fury Road and its comic series, both in 2015, illustrate this axiom. Equally localized is Max Tralian religion, which often denotes a fetishism of automobility and its vehicles. The comic crazy war boys of Immortan Joe and his son Scabrus Scrotus exemplify such fanaticism, and like Odin's In Hurriar, such battle fodder yearn for glorious death amidst vehicular combat, hurling themselves at enemy vehicles with gunpowder loaded spears. Thus, power in Max Tralia stems from the fractured social structures of warlordism, charismatic authority, and casteism. Totalitarians like Joe and others exemplify what Galtung would refer to as a monopoly on resources, space, and mobility. Goods and technologies are made accessible to warlord entourages in exchange for loyal service. And by contrast, contractors, laborers, traders, blood sport combatants, and hitmen roam fr freely through various encampments, bartering work and supplies. Finally, those of lower caste have little to no agency and exist at the mercy of totalitarians and others. Max Trelle features an occupation-based division of labor built by and into a culture of violence that rewards what Ahmed has called, quote, all the worst and wor most dreaded practices of a system such as untouchability, slavery, exploitation, humiliation, discrimination, and ostracism of lower caste members. But how is such madness rendered significant? How is it that science fiction and apocalypticism provide media through which said madness, madness is signified? Despite its near-future setting, Mad Max elicits colonial reproach as if it were set in a, quote, primitive past. According to Stover, science fiction is defined not only by its content, but also by its method or point of view. 
Films like 1964's Planet of the Apes and 1968's 2001 A Space Odyssey stem from the speculative anthropology mentioned earlier. Both films document the bizarre cultural behaviors and uncanny social interactions of those unevolved. Mad Max does the same by creating a new world where maximum madness is on full display for global audiences to voyeurize. This franchise exaggerates the semi-nomadic hunter-gatherer features of Aboriginal society, creating a whitewashed world overrun by highway gangs and wasteland factions competing in a barter economy that traffics raw materials and human bodies. Maxtralians speak and act like children, animal-like or feral, and are driven by irrational passion, savagery, sexual perversion, and deviance. As Brandlinger and others demonstrate, European colonizers hypothesized the cultural evolutionary process that seemingly produced Aboriginal society, proposing that, quote, the current state of Aboriginal culture may itself be the degenerated form of an earlier, higher level of social organization. The absence of a dominant language, recorded history, elaborate forms of worship, art, and monumental structures were used to discredit Aboriginals and their culture. Savage customs, for example, nomadism, warfare, superstition, infanticide, human sacrifice, and cannibalism, further provided colonial powers the fantasy of, quote, autogenocide or racial suicide, end quote. The profound nihilism that governs most of the Mad Max franchise perpetuates this cultural evolutionary sentiment. Furthermore, like the imagined Maxtralian culture that survives the Australian eschaton, the colonialist narrative of a self-extinguishing, degenerate Aboriginal society was itself a product of speculative anthropology and design fiction. Cultural and evolutionary anthropology, like science fiction, is indebted to colonial imagination. Mad Max possesses a Western reproach to indigeneity, which continues to shape the series' content, world-building, and aesthetics, as well as its attitude of voyeuristic excitement towards madness, pity towards primitivism, and fear of savagery. The series presents an eschatology that redirects the terra nullius doctrine, that is, a land belonging to no one, onto the descendants of Australian settlers. Previously, this doctrine legitimized the white appropriation of Aboriginal culture, uh, Aboriginal territory, which, as Morris writes, discursively invented Australia as, quote, an empty, that is, violently depopulated space for the enactment of colonial fantasy. In conclusion, Mad Max does the same, but with none of the resources or technologies available to effectively colonize an unattainable manifest destiny. Thank you so much.